Nerds for Knowledge here. And I'm Audrey. And today we are going to play for you Android Netrunner, a little card game you might have heard of, designed by Richard Garfield, a designer you might have heard of, as he's created other popular games like Magic, King of Tokyo, uh, Robo Rally, a lot of good games. All of his games are good. I'm a Richard Garfield fan. Anyway, Android Netrunner, like I said, is a card game. It's played by two players fighting against one another, much like Magic in its base form. It's one player against another player. It originally came out in, like, 94, 95, something like that, uh, right after Magic. It failed for a variety of reasons, and then was picked up later, last year, I think, by Fantasy Flight, who moved it into their Android world. And um, it's gained a lot of popularity very quickly. There are a million videos of people playing this at championships and whatnot on the internet. So, very interesting to watch. Now, what's unique about this particular card game is that it is a living card game as opposed to a collectible card game. Mm -hmm. So, Magic, which is actually one of the first games that um, I learned to play as, as a kid, um, is a collectible card game, meaning, you know, you never know what you're going to get in a pack. And certain cards that are more rare are worth more money. Um, Black Lotus, anyone? <laughs> But with this game as a living card game, as the expansions come out, you know exactly what cards you're going to get. Mm -hmm. And you have every opportunity to purchase every card there is. Yeah. So it, it just works a little bit different in that way. Um, this is also, I think, in my opinion, a really, really exciting theme. Uh, like he said, they, they said it in their Android world. It takes place in sort of a dystopian future. Mm -hmm. and. Um, there's a lot of information in the game, a lot of mechanics that I think really play into that theme well. Yeah, yeah, um, and we will talk about that more at the end. But yeah, it's it's a very good game. It's it's an uh, easy game to pick up. Maybe. Oh. No, maybe, okay, maybe it's not, it. I mean, it's easy to find. It's not necessarily easy to learn. There's a long rule book. I will it's, show you that during the rule section. It's easy to literally pick up. Yes, I can pick it up. Now, there's nothing in the box right now, but I can pick it up, and, and I have it here. Uh, but let's go ahead and show them the rules and the gameplay, and then we'll get back to you in the uh, post war Well, for the first time, we do not actually have the basic setup of a game showing. We have a game in progress, and there's a reason. For those of you who are at all familiar with this game, if we were to show you just the beginning, it would be a stack of cards there and a stack of cards there, and that would be essentially it, and that would be very boring and not a good way to explain the game. I will say at this moment we are not going to go through all the rules because this is the rule book. It's a nice rule book. It's got a few pages. We're not going to go through all this. It would be ridiculous. But we'll try to give you the basics. Essentially, this is a two-player game. You have the person who plays the corporation, the evil overlords of this society, and then you have someone else who plays the runner, and that's the rebel hacker who's trying to mess with the man. And that seems to work very well for them most of the time. And then up here we have our little supply bank with various tokens that mean various things when they're put in various places. So let's go ahead and take a close-up of each of these and we'll talk to you about what this all actually means. Here we have the corporation side. This is called research and development. For any normal game, it would just be called the deck or the stack. It's, it's the cards that you pull from. This is my corporation's name card. It shows who I am and what special ability I have since I'm playing that corporation. And then these two things over here are called remote servers. Each one of these cards that you see here, or stacks of cards, are called servers. We have the two remotes, the headquarters, research and development, and what's known as the archives, which is essentially just a trash pile. Now, we talked about the runner breaking into the corporation, and what they do is the runner tries to hack into each of these servers, and I, as the corporation, protect these servers with what is called ICE. It is it's essentially... Uh, encryption programs and stuff like that that stop the runner and cause damage. But the fun thing about the corporation is for you as a corporation player this is just a bluffing game. What you are doing is saying hey I've got some stuff out here you don't know what it is come at me bro 
let's see what's going on. And sometimes they're successful, sometimes they're not. But the reason that the runner is trying to break through all this ice and into your servers is to get what are called agenda cards. This is an agenda card right here. It has an advancement number, a point number. When either one of us gets enough agendas to score seven points worth, we win, either the corporation or the runner. The runner scores agendas by stealing them from the corporation. The corporation scores them by using its little click tracker here. These are called clicks and you get, as a corporation, three of them to spend per turn to do all of these various actions, gaining credits or drawing a card or installing an agenda. And all installing means in this game is to place it down on the board. You can also advance agendas. This agenda requires four advancement tokens. Now that I have put four on it, I'm able to score the two points and then put it down here in my score area. Now every turn, I as a corporation get to draw a card from the R&D, put it into my hand here, and then play cards using the clicks and using these credits over here. And my entire goal is to stop the runner from stealing my agendas by using ice and by using what are called assets that sometimes have traps to hurt the runner and to trick them into going for one as, as opposed to the other. And how we flip cards over, that's called rezzing. At the appropriate point in the game for that particular card, the corporation pays whatever the res cost is, it's this little thing up here, to turn the card over, at which point it becomes active. And if it's ice, it helps protect the server. If it's an asset, you can then use its ability, etc., etc. So let's move on to the runner. This is the runner side. And as you can see, my identity is here and I get to be a real person. And what's really cool is in the rule book, they actually have a background story for all the characters, which I just find really, really intriguing. It really helps you get into the theme. So down here at the bottom, I have my clicks or my actions. And as the runner, I have one additional one. However, um, if you look carefully at the runner action card, you'll notice that drawing a card takes a click, unlike the corporation, which just automatically gets to draw a card at the beginning of their turn. Over here, we have what's called the rig, and this is where I'm gonna be playing cards during the game. There are three different types, and they go in three different rows. I have programs here at the top. And that's what I'm gonna be using to break through the corporation's ice. Below that I have hardware, and this works to basically improve what's going on in my rig. And finally I have resources at the bottom, which are different cards that help me gain money and other things that are just going to help me throughout the game. Uh, this is my stack, cards that I can draw. This is my heap, my discard pile. And right down here is where I collect the different pieces of um, agenda that I have stolen and um, as Weston explained, you have to acquire seven points of, of agenda points in order to win. Uh, right here I have the actions that I can take during the game or my clicks. And you'll notice as the runner you have one additional click. However, um, the runner actions, uh, I'm sorry, in the runner actions card you'll see that you actually have to spend a click to draw one card, unlike the corporation which automatically gets to draw at the beginning of their turn. Right here I have my credits or my money. Um, and then up here I have a couple of tokens that you might acquire during the game. The first right here, this is a brain damage token. For every brain damage token you get as the runner, you lower your maximum hand size by one card. And that's important because your cards work essentially as your life in this game. So if you ever have to discard more cards than you have in your hand, then you lose the game. You've essentially died. And then right here, this is called a tag. Um, if it's on this side and that applies to the runner and tags are scary because it means that the corporation can spend clicks to discard your resources from your rig but then on the other side we have what's called bad publicity and these um, these attach themselves to the corporation and bad publicity is good for me because every time I make a run or try to break through the corporation's ice for every bad publicity that they have I get one additional credit that I get to spend during that run. So that's beneficial to me.
And that's essentially how the runner side works. So here, here we are at the beginning of the game. You shuffle your cards, you shuffle your, your neighbor's cards, your opponent's cards, whatever you want to call them. And then you draw a number of cards, five cards. Right on? Mm -hmm. Okay, draw five. Four. Five. Uh, it's important to note that there are four corporation factions in the starter box, and there are three runner factions. So you have a lot of replayability, and essentially all you do in the basic game is take the cards that are meant for the one corporation, for one of the corporations, and mix them in with neutral cards, and the runner does the same thing. The runner takes uh, his or her uh, runner deck and then mixes it with the neutral cards, and that makes a deck for them to play with. I, as the runner, get to choose whether or not I'm going to keep my hand first, and then the runner... Did I say I as the runner or I as the corporation? I don't know, but you are the corporation. Yes, I'm so. the corporation, so I get to choose whether or not to keep my hand. I'm going to keep my hand. Andrea, you're going to keep your hand. Yeah, I'm going to keep my hand. Okay. I don't know exactly how most people do it, but I we like to keep track of the, the click by taking the first one off and then moving it on when we use the first two, three, like that. Makes it nice and easy. So, beginning of my turn, I'm going to draw. And let's see. Here's what I have. Um, I, as Wayland, gain one credit whenever I play a transaction operation. So, I'm going to use my first click to install and uh, to um, play an operation. I'm going to play Beanstalk, which costs me zero, and I gain three credits. You start with five, by the way, just so you know. So I gain three, but since I'm Wayland, I gain one extra for having done a transaction operation. And I have two more, um, two more possibilities, what I'm gonna do, and I am going to, pay one click to install ICE in front of my headquarters. And then I'm going to pay one more click, my last, in order to install another piece of ice in front of my headquarters. And because there's already a piece of ice there, I have to pay one credit. I have to pay one credit for each other piece of ice already installed and put the newest piece the furthest ahead into my server. That is now the end of my turn. Okay. I have four clicks. With my first click, I'm going to play an event. Um, this is a mod and it allows me to install a program or a piece of hardware lowering the install cost by three. So then with my second click I'm going to take advantage of that by installing a program. Oh gosh, not Crypsis again. <laughs> Crypsis. <sighs> okay, I have to explain at this point. The card that she's playing, Crypsis, is literally the only icebreaker that I've seen her play so far. It's not true. Okay, you played one other one in one game. This is, this is the good one. It's not the good one. It has its advantages. It's a neutral one. It doesn't block certain types of ice. It breaks through all the types of ice using only one credit and one credit to gain strength. That's actually something we didn't talk about. Audrey, do you want to explain your ice has zero strength? Or your yeah. icebreaker? Yeah. Well, when I encounter a piece of ice with my icebreaker, you have to see um, how the strength of the icebreaker and the ice matches match up. Yeah, match up to the ice. And so she can spend a credit in order to boost the level of her icebreaker for each piece of ice she encounters, and then spend a credit to break the subroutines, which expensive. we'll talk about. It's expensive, but, but it's it can. Effective. Yes, but it's effective because it can break anything. It kind of right. replaces a whole removal suite in some instances, which is very annoying. So then I'm going to, I place this in my heap, or my discard pile. I have two clicks left. Um, with the first click, I'm actually going to make a run what? Um, on your research and development since it's unprotected. Oh, R&D. Okay. Yeah. I was like, so ah. I'm going to take the top card. Okay, so there is no ice protecting my R&D. I can put ice in front of my archives, my R&D, my headquarters, which is essentially my hand, and everything else. But yes, so she gets to see it. And Please tell me it's on the agenda. It's not. Um, can you pay the trash cost? There's a little garbage can 
uh, figure uh, symbol down in the bottom with a cost in it that means if, if the runner encounters this as part of a run, they can trash it for that I cost. I can, but I'm not going to trash it. Okay, so maybe it's not that important. And then with my final click, I'm actually going to add a virus counter to my Crypsis because one of the things that makes him a bit weaker than perhaps some of the other icebreakers is that whenever he encounters a piece of ice, after that it's finished, you have to either remove one virus counter or you have to trash this card completely. So really before you use him, you want to build up um, however many virus counters you're going to you're gonna need mm -hmm. for your run. So is that the end of your turn? That is. I've spent my four clicks. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and draw. Okay. Interesting. Now, this is something I didn't say. I can install agendas and assets in remote servers. I can install, but I can only have one asset or one upgrade, and that's it, in any remote servers. But I can have as many, I mean assets or agendas, but I can have as many upgrades as I want in any of the servers. Um, right now, what I'm going to do is pay one click to install something in a remote server. I'm going to pay another click to draw another card. And then I'm going to pay a final click to gain a credit. But because it's still part of my turn, I'm going to pay two credits to res this particular card. It's an so asset. What? You don't have to pay a click to I res. I don't have to pay a click to res oh, okay. because I paid the click to install. Okay. I pay the res cost. Okay. Um, yes, corporations put everything face down and then res it as it comes up. And this is an advertisement which gains me one credit when my turn begins. And I'm out of clicks. Okay. Alright, um, I'm going to pay a click and play another event. This is Diesel which apparently is, apparently is like some sort of futuristic energy drink. Diesel? Yeah. Um, mm. So then it allows me to draw three cards. So one, two, three. Put that in my heap. Um, let's see here. Sweet deal. All right, I'm going to pay another click and as well as two credits and play um, this event, which is a run. It says, make a run on research and development. If successful, access two additional cards from research and development. So I get to steal, or look at, Look at. Three cards. Yeah, I'll look at. Three okay. Cards. So one, two, sorry, it's kind of hard from the other way. One, two, three. Okay. And. Please tell me it's not an agenda. There is one agenda. Ugh. So I get to steal it. Yes. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave the other two for you. Okay. So I have now scored one. Worth how many points? It's worth one. Oh. Okay, yeah, I know. It's not that exciting. No, but it's better than nothing. Right. Okay, I still have two clicks. Um, let's see. I'm going to pay a click to gain a credit. And then I'm going to pay one additional click, and I'm going to use that credit that I just accessed mm -hmm. to install some hardware. Um, this hardware is a chip that gives me plus one memory. And I should say that the programs especially tend to have this icon up here where they take up memory. And, um, and as the runner, I have four memory that I can use at one time. And so this increases that. So now I have five that I have access to. And that's all my clicks. Okay. I'm going to draw and I'm going to gain a credit because of my advertisement here. I'm going to pay a click to install ice in an empty server here. I'm going to pay another click. 
to install the card here and then pay its res cost of one. It's an asset. I pay three clicks, I gain seven credits. And then I am going to pay one click to draw one card. Um, I'm going to pay a click to play another diesel. So I get to draw three more cards. One, two, and three. And let's see, I'm going to do one credit. I'm going to do a click and pay two credits to play another the exact same thing I played before the Maker's Eye. So it's an event, I make a run on research and development, and it, it's successful, I get to access to additional cards. Again? So, yeah. Come on, this is ridiculous. Did so you shuffle at all? Pay my last to do the run. Audrey? Yeah, yeah, did I did you shuffle. shuffle? Yeah, I shuffled. You, did you shuffle good? I have a question. Am I good? I mean, well. Do, what? if I play an event that's a run, do I have to spend a, an additional click to go on the run, or does this count as initiating the run? Let me see. Event, run, make a run, RMT. No, that should be. Okay, so I still have a click left then. Yeah. If you don't and we're playing it wrong, please let us know. We are fairly new to this game. Yeah! I steal two agenda cards, so now Can you I'm steal two in a run? Can you steal as many as there are? Yeah. Can you only steal one card? I'm pretty sure I can steal as many as there are. Really? Yeah. So that doesn't seem right. Well, now I have four. And I still have a click. And I'm going to spend that click to take a credit. Your turn. Again, if we're playing this wrong, let us know. I will look it up after the game. Uh, I go ahead and draw. Hmm. I gain a credit for my advertisement here. I'm going to spend one click and play this operation, which is a transaction, gain nine, pay five, so I'm not going to do the five, it would make no sense. I just gain four additional. Uh, but, because I'm Wayland, I gain another one, so I gain five. So I'm up to ten. I'm going to play a click to draw another card. I'm going to play one more click. To, I'm going to actually move everything over a little bit here because I'm running out of space with my servers. Don't be goofy. Here. All right. I'm going to move, leave this here, and then I'm going to go ahead and install another and pay my two credits to res it. It's another one of these. Sweet. Yeah. Well, yeah, it gets I'm... me two whole, two whole credits. And that is the end of my. Okay. So I'm going to spend my first credit to draw a card. Mm hmm. Um, I'm going to spend another credit to play another diesel and draw three cards. Yes. Sorry, I'm just looking at what I have here. Uh, I'll have you been pay... discarding down the actual hand size? Yeah, okay. I've never had more than five. Good. Um, I'm going to play Infiltration mm -hmm. and gain two credits. Okay, what does that do? Just, yeah, gain, just gain two credits? Two credits. Oh, okay, I can good. expose a card, and I've used it for that before, but I'm not going to use it for that in this instance. And then I'm actually going to... What? Sorry. I'm going to, with my last click, play um, another icebreaker. And I'm going to pay three credits to bring out Pipeline. What is Pipeline? Pipeline has one strength. Mm -hmm. I pay one credit to break Sentry Subroutine. Okay. And two credits to add 
one strength. Hmm. And it takes up one memory. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and draw. I'm going to play a click. A click, sorry. To stick some ice in front of the server. I'm going to pay another click to install a card here in my HQ and I'm going to pay my uh, two in order to uh, use my upgrade which is your maximum hand size is plus two. So I can have up to seven. However, I did forget, my bad, that I'm supposed to get two credits at the beginning of the turn. So I get my two credits and I pay my two credits. There we are. Uh, and then finally, I am going to go ahead and use one more click to draw a card. Okay. You use a click to draw a card. Unusual, I have to say, because credit. normally Audrey has no, about like, five oh, million fine, credits. Which is not good. It's great um, for me. It's going to make I, this a lot easier. I am going to use my last click to go on a run again for your research and development. Is it an agenda? No, and I, I can't trash it. Okay, so. awesome. My turn. I gain two credits because I remembered this time. <laughs> I go ahead and draw. I'm going to go ahead and use my three clicks to gain seven. Okay, and that's the end of my turn. Okay, so I'm going to actually take advantage of my pawn shop. I'm going to get rid of my hardware chip, trash that card, and take three credits. <gasps> How dare you! Oh, I'm low on funds. Okay. And then for one click, I'm going to draw. Uh, suckety suck. Um, for two and three credits, I'm going to take two more. Oh, and then, or I'm sorry, two and three clicks. And then my last click, I'm going to make a run on your research and development again. Come on, seriously? As long as it's available. Yeah, no. Okay. Okay. My turn, I draw a card. Yay. Actually, this is fine. Um, I'm going to pay one click. Oh, I have to discard. I'm sorry. Oh, oh and I gain. Thank you for reminding me. I gain two credits. Uh, I'm going to pay a click to install another piece of ice. Oh. Yep. I'm going to use another click and pay zero to gain three credits, which actually gains me four, because I'm Waylon. And I'm wailing on you. Whoa! Oh. Actually, that's not true. You're winning right now. I have zero points. Uh, we have a lot of money. I do. I got so much money. And then I'm going to use my last click to install. Right there. Okay. Right there. Right. Come at me, bro. Um, your wife, not your bro. Um, I'm going to pay a click to draw a card. Come at me, wife. What? Well, you know. I'm going to pay another click to put another virus counter on Crypsis. Mm -hmm. uh, it's right here waiting for it. Yeah, I'm kind of wondering if I should just try and expose it. 
expose it, eh? Yeah, you should do that. So I'm going to make a run, you may use a click, this may not be a good idea, but... So you use oh, a click? Oh, maybe I should go for research and development. It's like a chance or... Yeah, I'm going to go for research and development. Ah, okay. Okay. And then with my last click, I'm going to um, take a credit. Okay, go ahead. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and draw. And I have to discard this. And get my two credits, thank you. I am going to spend two clicks and two credits to advance this twice. Mm. And then score. Hostile takeover for one point. That's what? right. I'm catching up. And when I score it, I gain seven credits. Why? Because it's what it says. It's oh, part of the text. Man. I gain seven credits and take one bad publicity. Oh. Which gets you, you know. A credit when I make a run. Yeah. So there we go. I have a bad publicity. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, I'll put it right on me. Whale in with the bad publicity. Uh, and then finally, I'm going to spend I'm going to spend one click to install another card in that server. All right. I'm going to spend a click to draw a card. Um, I'm going to make a run on your research and development. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <sighs> you know, yeah. you're just, you're going to have to start running against something else because there are only so many agendas in here. Do want to know something funny? What? My special ability is Kate, is to lower the install cost of the first program or piece of hardware you install each turn by one. Oh well. Something you know now. Yeah. Okay, beginning of my turn. Wait, I still have two clicks Okay, left. well then keep clicking. Why don't okay. you run at me? Um, I'm going to take a credit. And I'm going to put one more virus token on Crisis. Okay, your turn. Okay. Let me just adjust this. I think it's getting a little weird and autofocusy. y Zoom it out. Alright, go ahead. Okay. Um, my turn. Mm -hmm. I gain two more credits because I'm rich. I take this. Hmm. I'm going to spend one credit, pay f or spend one click, pay five credits. Gain nine, which means I just gained four, but again, because I'm whaling, I gain one more, so I gain five more. I'm going to spend one to install another piece of ice. <gasps> I'm a bad person. Why? I didn't install, I didn't pay the credits for these extra installs, so I'll do that really quickly. This one needed one, this one needed two, and this one needed three. Yes, folks, if you ever do anything wrong, Make sure you fix it and actually tell the person you're playing against, because otherwise you cheated, and your win means absolutely nothing. Uh, just getting that out there. Just getting that out there. Uh, and then finally, I'll spend my last click and a credit. I thought I was had just a few too many tokens for what it is, uh, in order to advance whatever this might be back here. Could be an asset, could be a uh, agenda. We don't know. No, and that's too many ice for me to break through, I feel like, at this point. I'm going to pay one to draw a card and pray that it gives me money. So we're essentially in a race here, which means can she hit enough agendas quick enough out of my R&D before I can advance them through my turns? Well, actually, with this, this oh boy. gaining two credits, I'm going to expose one card. That's fine. You can see what it is. It's an ice. Oh, okay. It's an ice. Everyone can see what it is. Come on, autofocus you. Yeah, there you go. Three strength. 
three res cost and the run. And one more virus on Crypsis, and then um, this is against my better judgment, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to go after your okay. ice. Well, so runner goes after ice, or goes after this particular server. I pay three and flip over my first. Okay. To meet the strength, you have to pay wait, three what credits. What is this? A barrier. Okay. Um, Oh, I get one credit, by the way, for your bad publicity to use on my run. That's right. That's so there's that. that. Um, and then... So which one are you going to use? I'm going to use Crypsis. Okay, so you pay three. I pay three. My one special credit, my two of my own. Okay, so and now it's got three And then I pay one more to break through... The subroutine. Subroutine. So now it just stays there. And I have to remove a virus counter. I'm going to res my next piece of ice, which is three for me. It's two strength for you. Okay. And it has two subroutines. The runner loses a click if able, and you can end the run. Now, you don't have to break both of them if you want to lose your last click so that you can continue through and have another credit to spend. It's up to you. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Because um, there's no way that I'm going to break through two with just two credits left anyway, so I am going to use my last. Okay, your last click. Okay. Then end the run. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're going to end the run. Yeah. So good. I mean, she chose a good one to stomp on. She doesn't do any damage. She doesn't have to discard any but I know cards. It's there now. And she knows what's there. Right. So that was actually advantageous. Now it's my turn. <clears throat> I gained two credits. I'm going to go ahead and do this because I think it'll be funny. I'm going to pay one to... That's interesting. To install this and then res it for its zero cost. Pay one click and trash a resed piece of ice to gain four credits. But, because I'm Wayland, I gain five. Yay! Then I'm going to pay one more click. And three credits. To install a piece of ice. Okay. Your turn. I'm going to draw a card. I'm going to uh, pay a click and two credits. Audrey, did I gain my two credits at the beginning of that turn? I don't know. I don't remember. Okay, I'll just say I didn't. Or I'll say I did. I'm going to pay, this costs two credits, but I only have to pay one because I don't even remember what my special ability is. To play this piece of hardware in Crypsis, it is um, Host Icebreaker has plus one strength. So now Crypsis has a strength. Yay! Now it's almost as good as every other right, icebreaker. Exactly. And then um, I'm going to pay another click to make a run on your research and development. Come on, seriously? Seriously, it's unprotected. And it is an agenda! For oh my how goodness! Much? For three! Is that seven? It is! I won! <sighs> Even though I like totally wigged out on several. Yeah, I'll be completely honest, it was not the smartest move, and I'm just going to say it's not. It was not the smartest move to put another piece of ice here. That was stupid. I could have trashed that ice and stuck it here. Because this ice was Hadrian's Wall. Oh, man. Which is yeah. seven strength and has two subroutines, which would have held you at bay until I'd gotten some more ice. <sighs> but, yeah. Good so that's job. That's how the game works. Now, I'm just going to say, I've heard that... The runner has a slight advantage with very skilled players, and as you can tell, Audrey and I are very skilled players, <laughs> so she probably had a, a, a slight advantage. See you at the post-mortem. I lost. She's happy. She's finally won one of these things on, uh, on our channel now. That's right. Yeah, I lost, and I lost badly, folks. I, was, I made some stupid decisions. I should have put my ice in front of 
my R and D as opposed to a fourth ice in front of that remote server. I just I feel like this game, you know, in the intro you said this is an easy game to pick up, and then we kind of revised what pick up meant because this yeah. isn't a super easy game to just sit down and learn to play. Not that the mechanics are incredibly difficult, but there are so many things that you have to keep in mind to do yes. well. Um, yeah, the mechanics all make sense. They're all very. It's very thematic. It, they all fit in and, and make sense with what the theme is, and they work together, they mesh, but there are enough of them that you really have to, if you play this game tired, you're going to, like we did, you may make a couple mistakes and forget a couple cards and overlook some things. That's not how you want to play. You need to be alert when you play this game. Right. I feel like I probably would have benefited from just taking the time every turn to like re look at my cards and Okay, what are all my special abilities? What what are some different things that can can help me this turn? Because yeah, in the game I completely forgot that each character and corporation has a special ability and mine was really good and I So what did you think of the theme? Um well I I love any any game that or really anything with that futuristic dystopian theme. Mm -hmm. Especially love how in the rule book they have a lot of exposition and background stories for the characters and the corporations and just the world in general. Um, it, it really did it for me. I, I haven't read that. I did. That was like the first thing I did before I chose my char my character was mm. looking through and okay, what's the background story? I mean, she read me a little bit and I'm interested to read it, but I, I've not yet taken the time to do that. I, but you, I like, but you like the theme. And I like the theme. I think it's very cool. As far as um, like I said, wait, this is a wait your game, this is not a game to start with if you're not a gamer, if you haven't played any other card games that kind of work like this. Living card games were actually, I think that genre was created by Fantasy Flight with like Call of Cthulhu and stuff like that. But if you're not used to playing these kind of card games, the battling card games, this is not the one to start with. But if you have a little bit of experience, this is definitely a fun place to go. Oh, yeah. I would say, as far as components go, like the quality of the game itself, I think that for the most part they're very nice, but there's one thing, and again, this is me being nitpicky, just like I was with diamonds and the, you know, facing the same way thing, but it's not that nitpicky. If you notice on the back of the cards, you will have seen you get all the cool little techno, the blue for the corporation and the red for the runner. There's no border, though. There's no, like, black border or any kind of border around that defines the edge of the card. It just ends in the middle of a techno. Uh, tableau, I guess. And I don't like cards where the designs hit the edge of the card. I like there to be some sort of border that keeps them in place, that lets you know, here's the card, here's what you should be looking at. And so they just kind of run off the edge. And that I'm not a huge fan of. If they had a border, I think they'd look a little better. But that's just me. And again, I said, nitpicky little things. Overall, I mean, the, what the cards are made out of, they're easy, you know, it's nice, they're easy to read, the components are nice and easy to see, they're not all this big. Yeah, I think it's really good. I just would prefer a border around the cards. Would you recommend people playing this? Yeah? Yeah, I really like this game, actually. Yeah, I think it's a very cool game. Another home run for Richard Garfield. Good job, sir. And, uh, I almost forgot one of the most important points. What? It's an asymmetrical card game. Didn't we say that in the intro? Oh, we didn't say that in the intro. Yes, this is an asymmetrical card game, in case you didn't know by now, which means we come at the win condition from, you know, using two different systems and strategies, and our sides play completely differently. If you only play the corporation, the game will be entirely different than if you've only ever played the runner. You need to play both sides to really get the full experience of the game. And I recommend it. You should pick it up. Uh, I will have the information down below, you know, in my blog, and yeah, it's it's definitely a good game. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. So I guess this is Weston, and I'm Audrey, and we're saying hacking is illegal unless you're playing games where you can do it, and then it's not only legal; it's fun too. So hack away. Right? Yes. With a with a typewriter.
typewriter. That's right. Hack with your typewriter. Okay. See you later. Play games. Play lots of games.